Hi again everybody. This is the third video uh, giving examples of how to take a matrix and upper triangulate it. That is, choose a new basis for your vector space such that the matrix is going to be in an upper triangular form. This time we have a 4x4. Four four. Now we've already done a 2x2 two two example, which you could see uh, here. Uh, you could also look at the example for 3x3, three three, and that is here. Okay. So watch those videos first to get a good feeling for what we're doing. All right, well, let's, uh, let's jump into the 4x4 four four here. Uh, as before, we're going to start with choosing a non-zero vector, apply the operator to it until we get a linearly dependent list. So I'll start with you, and well, again, I just start with the easiest one I can think of. This is, of course, not linearly dependent by itself, so I apply the operator t to it. I get tu. And, well, one thing you might notice when you multiply by a column vector with that 1 in the first component, all it's going to do is, is rip out the first column. If we put this 1 in the second component, it will take the second column, third to the third, fourth to the fourth. All right, so we just pull this first column out here. 3, negative 1, 1, negative 1. All right, a little easy inspection tells you these are not linear combinations of each other. So we go to t squared u. All right, so I have to apply the matrix now to this column. Let's see, we get 9, 10, 4, 3. Okay, now the second one. Uh, 1 and 3 is 4. Uh, oh, did we skip one? Let's see. No. Uh, my, I'm sorry, we skipped one. Minus 3, minus 3 is 6, plus 4 is minus 2, plus 1 is minus 1. Okay, third one, we get... 3, 4, 2, 1. And the final one, we get minus 3, uh, minus 4, 0, and negative 1. Ah, well, this does not take so much work to see that t squared u is going to be a linear combination of u and tu. It equals tu. So this is really easy. 1 t squared u equals 1 tu. Eh, that was really nice. Uh, the equation that we could write down from this is also quite nice. We say, okay, fine, t squared u minus tu is going to equal 0. All right, let's see. I can factor this in a couple ways. Uh, one of them is to pull out a t and write this as t minus i times u. And that's will equal 0. And that tells me that, well, let's see. We know this first part can't equal 0 because tu and u were not linearly dependent. And so this is going to be an element in the null space of t, which means that 0 is going to be an eigenvalue, and this is going to be the eigenvector. So we get an eigenpair with eigenvalue 0 and eigenvector t minus i u. All right, that we can, we can do pretty easily. Uh, so that's just tu minus u. So we're going to get 2 negative 1, 1, negative 1 minus 0 is negative 1. Okay, so we have our first eigenpair. But another way we could have written this was to put the t minus i first. So we could have t minus i applied to tu. And this shows you that, well, now tu is not 0, that tu is going to be an eigenvector for the eigenvalue 1, because tu is in the null space of t minus i. So we get another eigenpair. And the, again, the eigenvalue is going to be 1. The eigenvector is going to be tu. Okay, that we just have right here. 3, negative 1, 1, negative 1. All right, so we've built two eigenvalues, and we have corresponding eigenvectors. It's not quite enough, right? We need a basis, and that's going to require four vectors, and we only have two. Okay, so we start the process over. But we don't forget what we've done. So I'm just going to start with a new non-zero vector. So now let me call it v. All right, I want to take something which is going to be linearly uh, independent with what we have. Well, I don't worry about t squared u. This one, we already knew that was dependent on these two. So I just want something which is in the linear combination of u and tu. So I'm going to take here the next easiest vector to start with, 0, 1, 0, 0. And you can see that u, tu, and v cannot be linearly dependent. 
Because if they were, then TU would be a linear combination of U and V. And how are you going to get a minus 1 from two zeros? Ain't going to happen. All right, so we have a linearly independent list so far. Uh, so I apply T to V. And when I apply T to V, well, let's see, since this just has a 1 in the second component, it's going to rip out the second column. So I get negative 1, 3, negative 1, 1. Okay, so now I want to know, can TV be written as a linear combination of U, TU, and V? And the answer in this case is going to turn out to be yes. But let's see why. If I want to write TV, well, let's see here. I have 1, and I need to get a 1. Ah, there's the only place I can get it from. I have negative 1, so I better have negative 1 of those. Uh, now let's look here. I have negative 1, and well, I already have negative 1, and there's no more coming in, so we're still okay. All right, let's go up to here. I need to get three, and I have one. There's no only one other place to get stuff. I need to get two more, so I better put a two here. And now up here, let's see, I have negative one. That's where I want anyway. And let's see, I already have negative three. That doesn't give me anything. So I have to get from negative three to negative one, so I need to add two. So I better have two of those. Okay, so this TV is going to be dependent on U, T, U, and V. That's not so bad because it gives me another relation to write down. TV minus two Vs plus a TU minus two Us equals zero. Okay, a little bit of mental uh, gymnastics here. You see that this is T minus two I evaluated at, well, let's see, I'm going to have to have a V, and I'm going to have to have a U, so this would be V plus U. Does it make sense? Let's see. TV, TU, minus 2V, minus 2U. Okay, this works. All right, so that tells me that this vector V plus U, which that's, well, that's easy to figure out what that is. This part here, that equals uh, 1, 1, 0, 0 is going to be in the null space of t minus 2i. And so, well, I have an eigenvector now for the eigenvalue 2. So I get an eigenpair, 2 comma 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay, so I now have three vectors, but I need four. I want a basis. Okay, so I start again. Call it, say, w. Now, if I was being consistent, I would just, okay, use 0, 0, 1, 0. And I know that's going to pull out the third column. Well, those numbers look really big to me. I mean, they're not so big, but they're bigger than the fourth column. So I'm going to use 0, 0, 0, 1 just so I get the fourth column, which is smaller. Okay. Now, could it be that W was actually in the span of U, T, U, and V already? Okay, let's take a look. Uh, well, if it was, then I would, let's see. I would have to be able to just, oh, I'd have to use negative one of these TUs, but then, oh dear, that's not good at all, because then I would have negative one from here, and I'd have a zero here. That's not possible. So, all right, it's not linearly, uh, no, it's not a linear combination of U, T, U, and V. So I have uh, still a linearly uh, independent list. So let me apply T. That gives me the fourth column, one, minus one, one, one. Okay. Now, we know that U, T, U, V, and W is already a linearly independent list with four elements, and the vector space is dimension four. So we already have a basis, which means that TW is going to have to be a linear combination of U, T, U, V, and W. All right, so let's try to do it. If we have one of those TWs, well, let's see. All right, we're going to... Uh, look at, say, this row. We have one, and, okay, that doesn't give us any, that doesn't give us any, ah, we need one of those TUs. All right, all right, let's jump down. Okay, now, I need one. I have minus one, so I'm going to need two more. And I can get two more by putting two in the W column. Okay, so, let's see. If we take this second row, we want minus one. We already have zero. And, oh, we already we have minus 1. We wanted minus 1. We have minus 1. 
This doesn't give us anything, so we don't want any of these either. Okay, now if we use the top row, we have one. This gives us zero, zero. This gives us three. We want one, we have three, so we need negative two. So, okay, negative two times one does it. So that tells us that TW minus two W's uh, minus TU plus two U's equals zero. And using another clever factorization, 2 minus ti applied to w minus u equals 0. Let's check. tw, t of minus u, okay, that's minus tu, minus 2w, and plus 2u. Beautiful. And so this tells us that we have an eigenpair. Eigenvalue is 2. And the eigenvector is w minus u. Okay, we look over there, we see, okay, fine, that'll be uh, negative 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay, we now have our four eigenvectors that will form the basis. So we'll call this one V1, this will be V2, this will be V3, and this down here will be V4. And so we can rewrite our matrix in terms of this new basis, V1, V2, V3, V4. So if we have V1, V2, V3, V4 along the top, we apply T to it. Now each one of these is an eigenvector, so when we apply T, we'll just get a multiple of it. Which multiple? Well, the eigenvalue. So let's see, V1, that corresponded to the eigenvalue 0. So it's just 0 times everything. How about V2? Well, that was the eigenvalue 1. So the answer should be 1 times V2. Okay, V3. V3 came from the eigenvalue 2. So T of V3 will just be twice V3. And V4 oh, also came from the eigenvalue 2. So T of V4 is twice V4. Once again, we end up with an upper triangular matrix, which is even a diagonal matrix, because we were able to form a basis completely full of eigenvectors. All right, I hope this really helped you guys in learning how to take your matrices and turn them into upper triangular matrices.